Right, on this video we're going to show you how I change the brake pads on the Discovery Sport. Now uh, this is a 2017 model, it's the rear brake pads and wear sensor. Um, this is the wear sensor that we're using, uh, supplied by Euros. It's a rear brake pad wear sensor and that's a part number. Uh, and this is the part number of the brakes, the padded. And we'll also use some of this brake grease part number. This was supplied by Euro Car Parts, one of my suppliers. You would have to check for your Discovery Sport model year um, whether those parts are correct or not. Obviously depending on specification of the vehicle you might have different size brake pads or discs and stuff like that when you do these repairs so always check with your supplier with your chassis number or your vehicle registration number and they should be able to point you in the right direction of the correct parts. So let's crack on and get it done. Right, so for the next bit, we're going to take the wheels off. Make sure the vehicle's jacked up securely both sides. Right then, for this next stage, uh, we're going to go through on the RT Diag 800BT topped on. These are quite affordable for the DIY user. I think they're approximately around £300 on Amazon and eBay. Crack the rear service brake because this vehicle has electronic rear handbrake. So we're going to go into maintenance and service. We go to brake. We're going to scroll down to Land Rover. Switch on the ignition. Yes, I've got the ignition on. Automatically search. Connect the device if the ignition on so that the vehicle could be matched. Basically this is just talking to the vehicle and reading the VIN, making sure it's correct, so it tells you all the specification there. So we want to do special function. So parking brake, brake pad replacement, release to service position. Right, so the ignition on. It's okay. Right, during the procedure, engine supply, engine shall be off, and the supply voltage needs to be 12.5 or above. If the voltage is less than, it might not work. Switch the, the ignition point to position zero. Back to ignition point two. You find this a lot of these Jaguar Land Rovers, to be fair. Let's turn the ignition on and off in a lot of these processes. Okay, make sure the following has been taken. Make sure the vehicle is stationary on level ground and that the brake pedal is not depressed. Chock the wheels and make sure that the vehicle cannot roll backwards or forwards. Release the parking brake. So we need to do that now. Right, so the parking brake released. If you don't do that, it won't work. Press OK. This application will retract the parking brake pistons to allow the fitment of new brake pads. Okay. Parking brake replacement, release the service position. Okay. There you go, you can hear those actuators on the rear brake calipers. Does it compete? Right, so that's now done. So we can switch the ignition off on the vehicle. Back to ignition point two. It does love a cycle of this. The next procedure will be to carry out a complete vehicle diagnostic trouble code clear. Do you wish to continue? No. Yeah, because we don't want to clear it. We just say OK. That's out of that. So that's now in the service position. <coughs> right, so now we just need to crack on with actually changing the brakes. Right, so next next uh, thing we want to do is we want to put something in here and just pull the piston back a bit just to allow us free movement once we've got the caliper detached. We can take that off. You've got your two sliding pins on these calipers and they have a dust boot on the end here. So I don't physically remove this bottom one because um, it's so close to the arm here. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get it out. So I just I just take this one off and then I slide it off the bottom slider pin. Now, other people might say that's the wrong way to do it, but that's the way I do it. Um, it's, it's just far easier. So yeah, so like I say, we need to retract this piston a bit so we can get this off and undo this top one. I'll be using a small lever bar for this. And we just literally go in here, 
literally pull it back. You can pull it back with one finger. The thing you'll want to do is you'll want to remove these. Do it without two hands. So, what you want to do is you want to be really careful. Put the lever, that one out, but hold on to the rest of the spring because it could come out and it could go flying. So they go into those little holes there. Now we want to just push the cap end cap off. Now that's out, we're going to want to use a short 7mm Allen key. It's 3 8 on a 3 8 flexi uh, ratchet. It literally goes in there. I thought I'd take a moment just to say thank you for watching this video. If you do enjoy any of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button and share this video to your friends and family. You just want to track that sliding pin enough so that you can slide this off. So once that's like that, you can literally slide it out of the way and literally let it just hang there. So then we're going to change these pads out. This side don't look too bad, but the other side's quite a bit more worn. Important step here, use a wire brush. We're going to clean this up. What I'm going to do is just put something underneath to catch all of the brake dust and bits and pieces. Be a good idea to wear a uh, face mask when you're doing this, just to protect you from breathing in any of this nasty brake dust. Just cleaning this bottom slider up, so that's all nice and clean. And we'll take this one out. We'll also give this a good clean up. Basically you want them looking like that, nice and shiny. And we'll grease these up afterwards. Let's get the new pads out of the box. So quite important, you have two different brake pads for the inner and the outer. So for the outer one, you have this one that's got an adhesive pad on it. That sticks to the caliper itself, so we'll clean the inside of the caliper up. But we'll basically, when we get to that point, we'll peel this off. Uh, for the inside pad, it's got this, which is a sort of an anti-vibration clip that presses on the inside of the caliper to apply pressure. Um, also on the other side, so on the driver's side rear, uh, this is where it'll hold the brake pad wear sensor. So just important to remember this. Next we're going to want to grease up where our pads slide. We don't want too much, but just enough to, to enable free movement. And like I say, I'm using this Ceratec grease. And then there's all back mounted in there. So the next stage will be to clean the inside edge of this caliper. It's pretty clean anyway from where the last one was stuck. And we'll also bit of wipe down right, and then we want to peel off the backing don't want to leave that on it's important to remove that because that'll stick to the inside of here next thing we want to do is grease up your slider pin at the bottom again not too much just enough then we can slide that back on here to note that these springs need to be in here sometimes on certain brake pads if they pivot in the middle one might end up over the edge you need to make sure they're behind this surface here and we need to grease up our other slider pin before it goes back in we pop that back in there now we need to tighten this back up Don't 
don't forget to pop your cap back in that just stops all the dirt and stuff getting in there check all your brake pad wiring and your brake hose make sure it's not twisted you may have accidentally twisted it round putting it back on that's very important um, and just make sure it's in its holder and everything like that plug still in obviously with cap still on there because we didn't remove the bottom one and then we'll take you around to the side so for this bit we just want to mount some pressure between this and the pad because that's got a sticky area just to make sure that that pad's stuck firmly to this which is great next thing we need to do is put the spring retaining clip back in this again helps for smooth movement and to stop any movement of the caliper like this and also vibration from the brakes so i'll just push the bottom one in put that one in slightly and we're in there There we go. So spring retaining clips back in. This side's done. We will need to um, go and do the other side. And on the other side, I'll also show you, I won't show you the whole process. I'll just show you how to replace the brake pad wear sensor because it is exactly the same process on that side apart from the brake pad wear sensor. So let's go. Right, so on this side, this is your brake pad sensor wire here. And it clips in there, there, and it also follows around onto the lower arm and it goes up over there. Um, I'm just going to time lapse the first part of it but I'll show you quickly before I do the routing of this cable where it goes to the connector plug on the chassis and um, to pull it out literally just sometimes it'll break but we got a new one anyway. There we go, did it actually break look, pulling it out. Have a little retaining clips you can lose these on the new ones quite easily, so be careful. Um, literally pull it out. Pull it out there, and that's off the caliper completely now. So I'll just time lapse this bit, and then I'll show you with the caliper off the routing of that cable. If you could just take a moment to subscribe to this channel, you'll find loads of useful information on various vehicle repairs. Right, <clears throat> so with the caliper off, hangs the one side. I'm just going to show you the routing of it. So in here, just underneath this cable, it clips in there. So again, you're going to want to push that one out. I might not be able to do that without doing it off camera. But um, there's another one up here on this wishbone. There's also another one. You can see it. Try and keep you in shot here. There's also another one here. And then there's another one just up here and then if we come around we'll be able to see up top here here just to the right hand side of the spring this is your brake pad sensor wire so that need to be changed this bit will remain that is the actual chassis connection this half of it here is the actual brake pad wire and sensor plug uh, so yeah so you need to disconnect that and obviously swap it over like for like but yeah. Right, so I thought I'd just catch up. Um, so anyone eagle-eyed, remember I said about making sure that these are okay and they're all clipped into their harnesses and not twist or anything. Mine didn't twist, but when it did hang off to the side, it did pull this cable for the EPB or electronic part brake motor out of the holder here. <clears throat> and if I hadn't, I clipped it back in it could have chafed on something and then left you without the part brake working correctly so and also we can see that the new sensor is all clipped in and in here it's all in the brake pad itself so be really careful when pushing these in because these are really delicate um, they're very fragile sometimes i'd say if it's the first time doing it just make sure you've got two of these sensors to hand just in case when you push the first one in because you haven't done it before you might break this by giving it too much pressure it is quite firm but if you do put too much pressure, they snap here or they snap in the actual holder, like when I took the other one out. <clears throat> but yeah, that's all done. I'll just show you on the computer how to put the part brake back on. And obviously we just need to pop the wheels back on, torque it, everything back up and drop it down on the ground once the part brake's been reset. Wait until that point because obviously your EPB won't be out of service mode yet. So the vehicle could roll, especially if it's a manual transmission. This is an auto, so in park it might be okay, but it's just not worth the risk. Right, so now we're going to 
take it back out of service mode on the parking brake. So we'll need to turn the ignition back on. So we come. Parking brake, pad replacement, exit maintenance mode, yes. Okay, switch ignition onto ignition point two, we've done that. Note during the procedure, the engine shall be off and the supply voltage needs to be 12.5 or above. If the voltage is less than the standard, then the procedure may fail. Set it to zero. Make you keep running to and from the car. Put the ignition point to ignition point two. So ignition point two is when you got when you first turn the car on. If you're not actually starting it, it's got all the engine management lights and ABS lights that sort of come on for a few seconds and whatnot. Um, so yes. Make sure that the following action has been taken. Make sure that the vehicle is stationary on level ground and that the brake pedal is not depressed. Chock the wheels and make sure the vehicle cannot roll backwards or forwards. Release to the parking brake. Press OK to continue. After new brake, uh, parking brake pads have been fitted, this application must be completed to re-enable the parking brake operation via the parking brake switch. Warning, the application will now extend pistons to make the brake pads touch the brake discs. Okay. Parking brake, pad replacement, exit maintenance mode, application, yes. There we go, you can start to hear those calipers, the EPB motors. Basically what they're doing is they're going through a full function cycle of applying and releasing and applying the brakes. Oh, it's now complete, okay. Now we need to turn the ignition back off again. As we can hear there, just like normal, when you turn the ignition off, the EPBs normally automatically go on. So we've turned the ignition off, set the ignition back to ignition point two again. Right, so we've done that, press OK. Next procedure, we'll carry out a, a trouble code clear with the vehicle diagnostic. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Because now we're putting it back together, we want to make sure that there's no fault codes outstanding. Let's say that the brake pad uh, wear sensor had an issue or anything like that this should bring up that it's got a, like a broken wire or that the plug connection's not great it might have a, like a short to ground or a broken wire so it's really good to carry this function out and make sure obviously when the, it exited the service mode that the EPBs reset correctly and there's no trouble codes for that either right go through this process again so turn the ignition to um, position zero, so off. <coughs> Select OK. We want the ignition to ignition point two. OK, we've done that. Control module procedure completed successfully. OK. Now switch it off again. And select. OK. So that process is done. Um, so I hope that helped you guys. If you did use this tool and when you come out you can also double check by reading the fault codes. No fault codes present. Absolutely great result there. So once again thank you very much for watching this video. hope this helps you if you need to change your rear brake pads on your uh, discovery or whether you need to remove the calipers for any other service reasons or strip down of hubs. Um, please do like, subscribe and share. If you do like this content, hit the bell notification and you'll be notified of my newest content coming up. And also, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Thank you.